at the Martini Studios in Ontario, California, it's The Fooboy Show! Hey, what's up everyone? I am Joe C. I'm Josh. With The Foo. And Steph. Thank y'all very much for listening to The Foo Bar Show. Thanks for hitting subscribe and remember rate review and tell your friends like a champ. You can always reach us at Foo Bar Show. That's FWBarshow.com. And F the Below Bar Show is your handle on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and Instagram. Check us out, drop us a line, and we'll foo it up like a couple of foos. Ain't that right, foos? I don't know about today, man. Nah, yeah, today's a hard one, man. And uh, we're going to take this time, actually, to reflect on the news that broke this morning. Now, I found out about what, like, it was around noon time. Yeah. Yeah, same. Yeah, I would, I would say, yeah. yeah, and it just spread like wildfire, man. But um, Kobe Bryant. Number 24, passed, passed away. away from a helicopter crash this morning. Uh, and what was he doing? He was taking his little girl to a basketball practice? Yeah, from the, or I think a practice like, or a tournament for, the, like a for, travel, the, Mamba, for like, the Mamba Academy. Yeah, a travel game, I so believe. So little girl Gigi, she's only 13. 13. Yeah. So should they both passed amongst some other people that were on the helicopter. But God damn, it was devastating. Dude, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was I w- in the bathroom and I yelled out to Steph. And I'm like, Steph. Yeah. Yeah. I froze in my tracks. <laughs> like, I, I I, was just like, what did you say? No, I didn't hear you properly. Yeah. And I was just like, that has to be some kind of fake story. So I went online. Sure enough, who has the news? TMZ. TMZ, man. And, uh, you know, the sheriff's department started questioning, you know, the integrity of or morality of whether or not TMZ should have reported it so early on before the coroner. But um, that's what that's just what they're about. If you ask me, I don't know. It's it's that struggle foo of uh, is is breaking news right? Because I'm assuming if this was a different incident where a cover up was needed, then this is like why they're afraid. If mm. if the if the person who had passed, unfortunately, you know, saying this, you know, you kind of I kind of feel a little wrong saying this, but mm. if it wasn't Kobe that had passed in this, yeah, we probably wouldn't have found out until like. Five o'clock tonight, you know, on the five o'clock news. Oh, or it wouldn't yeah, have been TMZ. It wouldn't be a TMZ, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. It, unfortunately, it's that type of circumstance, and the people that are involved that get the, you know, that'll get the immediate press and coverage on it. And yeah, I mean, this whole situation is just it's heartbreaking, you know. The thing for me is, you know, we were talking about off air, is that it is the news reporting, and you know, we're getting incident update pretty much for a celebrity. But at the end of the day, it's like. How does his wife find out you yeah, know, through on, TMZ. on the news? Yeah. Like, that's pretty fucking devastating instead of, like, getting a phone call about it. Or, you know? for all we know, she probably, you know, because this did happen at 10 a.m., she was aware that they were going on this helicopter trip. Mm-hmm. So they company, I would, I would hope, immediately would have called his wife and let him know what happened. You know, right. I would I would hope something we don't know that details like that. That's the kind of Probably details we don't too. know. Yeah, I think I think that's going to be. I, I think we may at some point, but you know, I think because Kobe is you know a celebrity and he's a millionaire, he's rich. It could have been a private you know flight. Mm-hmm. Which it totally it was, was his helicopter. Yeah, he yeah. he has his. I think he bought his own helicopter. Yeah, company. so like we he don't would famously it. fly it over to Staples Center. We for don't. Games. Yeah, so like practice. we don't have to know the details, or like we wouldn't know them right away. Like now, it's coming down to because it's not being reported to like a com- through a company. Mm-hmm. Like we'd have to find out through the FAA and shit like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we've essentially have gone through the many stages. Of grieving today, yeah, because <laughs> obviously we're at the point of anger. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm at acceptance now. Luckily for me, I think um, you know it's it's. Uh, I've said it already, and I've said it before. The only other celebrity that I actually have felt like this when they passed was Scott Weiland oh, of yeah, Stone Temple that, Pilots. Uh, um, now you know the argument has been made by friends of mine that you know we saw it coming with him. You know with his bouts of addiction and and things like that but you know it's he's he's just one of my favorite vocalists and front men and mm-hmm. rock and rollers man you know so it hit me like a ton of breaks so regardless of whether or not i saw it coming it sucks to see him leave this planet the way he did um yeah you I know mean, when you see greatness like mm-hmm. that just perish ah dude it hits you like damn you know we lost a good one yeah especially in such a tragic way, mm-hmm. you know, the, his 13-year-old daughter, who was pretty much like him, 
That was his mini me, essentially. Because oh, yeah, she was and... the one that was going to be in the WNBA. Yeah. yeah. Well, you saw yeah. like earlier this year that his daughter, like Kobe, never used to watch NBA games. But he started to this year because his daughter's like, I want to be. I want to be. You know, I want to be. I want to continue your legacy. Because mm-hmm. I guess she like there's a there's a scene, I guess, when Kobe was on Jimmy Kimmel, like he uh, Jimmy Kimmel asked like, oh, you know, are there going to be any sons or, you know, are you going to have any boys continue <laughs> on? And he's like, you know, it's funny. He's like the other day I'm at the game with my daughter and I'm talking to some fans or whatever. And then some fans come up to me like, hey, 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 Kobe, Kobe, where are the sons? Where are the sons? Come on. Continue your legacy. And then my daughter's like, oh, hold on. I got this. Don't worry. I got it. <laughs> it's just like, ah, uh, just hearing that and seeing those things. It's, uh, it's, it's, I can only imagine what, you know, Vanessa Bryant, his, his widow is going through and her other remaining three children. Like that's, that's gotta and be a newborn dude. Uh, yeah. They had just yeah. had a newborn. Oh, I believe it's Natalia, Bianca and Capri is the newborn. He has, you know, uh, it's it's a, it's a sad sad day, especially seeing all these reactions and mm-hmm. all these statements from these great NBA legends. You know, oh man, yeah, just about everybody spoke up. If if not directly to the press, at least on their Instagram, you know, they posted some stories up about you know what their feelings were about it. It was cool to hear from them. Yeah, I, I think I I think like the the last big day where we've had such a tragic death. Steph kind of mentioned this earlier was when MJ died. The MJ, world, yeah. the world grieved, and like that's mm-hmm. kind of how it feels right now. And before that, the only real thing I can remember is John Lennon. Yeah, John. When when John Lennon got shot outside of his apartment in New York, well, actually, you remember can't, that? Can't remember. No, don't. I don't. But I could just imagine. Well, he remembers reading about it, Steph. Oh, well, there you <laughs> go. I, I saw the Jared Leto movie, whatever <laughs> it might have been called, but I saw it. <laughs> oh man, that was a fool. Yeah, that was that was a movie. That was a movie. Yeah, all right, all right. Jared, yeah, somebody Jared Leto Jared gets no shout outs on this podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. My bad. Damn. My bad. Well, right, I, well, don't I don't think. I'm just kidding. Like, I don't think the Food Bar Show recognizes that as the the real Joker. Anyway, no, no, not. no, not at all. all right. Well, then and that's cool. the only instance. His, mu- his music. I'm sure you have a better. Uh, well, let's see how Morbius looks. Morbius looks like it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, let's uh, let's continue on with you know. Let's reflect. Like, Josie. Speaking of Jared Leto, I got this one. Oh, God. You like Huey Lewis on the news? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite Kobe moment that you remember seeing? Dude, I grew up just watching this guy just give it to the other teams, you know? Just like he, he brought us the three-peat. He he gave he gave us what magic couldn't and gave that greatness of it, it was like that feeling. I'm I'm old enough to remember what it was like watching Michael Jordan on TV. Yeah. I was very young when it happened, but I do remember those times and how excited my cousins were when he would, you know, play with the Bulls. And then to relive that kind of excitement in my middle school days with the Lakers and and Shaq in the fold and, you know, taking us to three championships in a row. God damn, those teams were amazing to watch. And then you still had a worthy Celtics team going up against them just like back in the 80s. You know, it was a, it was an amazing kind of, I don't know, like a reboot, like a real life reboot of the movie that was the Lake Show. Oh, wait, oh, wait to, oh, to 10, right? Oh, dude. He, yeah, I mean, Kobe... Kobe was a legend. He, he 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 had so many goddamn great moments. I mean, his eighty-one point game against the Raptors yeah. just torched Jalen Rose. Like, I, I, you know, it's funny the they team, had man. the whole team. But it's funny he points it right at Jalen Rose because there's a there's a video out where like all of a sudden in like almost curb it's, your it's, enthusiasm kind yeah, of fashion. It's, like a, it's a commercial from a few years back. Yeah, Jalen Rose walks through a restaurant and all of a sudden you just hear Jalen, yeah, and he turns around and he's like. Oh. <laughs> and he's just like, the, camera, hey. the camera swoops around and yeah. then it's Kobe. And he's all, hey, Kobe, what's up, man? He's like, what's up, dude? He's like, hey, man. So, you know, about the thing on the TV earlier, he's like, oh, no, dude, it's water in the bridge. Don't worry about it. He's like, you know what, man? That's cool, man. I'm glad that you could be your, you know, you know, cool about it. He's like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, stats aren't my thing. So then the waiter comes by and he's like, hi, Mr. Brand. You know, what can I get for you? He's like, vodka martini. Okay, how many olives? 81. 
<laughs> it's just like dead silence. And then Jaylen's Kobe's just <laughs> looking at him serious in the face. They're just like dead silence from each other for a few seconds. And then, then the, the waiter's like, wait, are you, are you serious? He's like, nah, I'm just playing. Joke for him. I'll take two. <laughs> 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 oh, man. He, he had just those great he was so witty and so intelligent like i have his book the mob mentality and i'm so happy that i purchased it like it really gives you an insight into how creative and how intelligent the man really is and you know his he created a whole mentality the mamba mentality he was an intellect man yeah Uh, that guy loved knowledge and the fact that he can speak so many languages was so like wow this guy does not fuck around no like he knows what he's about and he's a real intellectual yeah 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 he would often do interviews in italian after the game yeah yeah italian broadcasters i mean he even uh he would shit talk to foreign players in their native language, <laughs> like he learned and they would Slavic. Come to fuck like, with them, yeah, yeah, and they'd be like, "The fuck, dude!" Like <laughs> they would, they would. The, I think um, Joseph Nurkic said that one day, all of a sudden, Kobe just started talking shit to him. He said, "Fuck you." In Russian, and he's just like, "Wait, what?" He he like stood back <laughs> and he let Kobe score because he's like, "Holy shit!" I, he's like, "Kobe just cussed at me <laughs> in my native language. What the fuck's happening?" This here? is off the court, but one of my favorite. Um, well, it, it doesn't even involve Kobe per se, but it, remember that Nike commercial with the puppets where David yes. Allen Greer made, yeah. where they're trashing LeBron for not having any championship rings yet? <laughs> well, <laughs> this was had, years ago. They had, they had little Kobe, the little Kobe puppet, and they have the little LeBron puppets. Remember yeah. these like, things go side by side? Dude, yeah. that was, dude. It was like 2009. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that, that was, was great. Nike banking on the Cavs making it to mm-hmm. the finals against yeah. the Lakers. Yeah, and then the fucking that was one magic of the biggest, fucked up. That was one of the biggest disappointment ever that would have been an awesome fucking match that would have been fantastic for the books dude yes the history books would have had a field day. honestly man i wish lebron would have came to la when he left cleveland instead of miami yeah oh Uh, dude that would have been multiple championships and it's crazy because uh lebron requires the cooperation more so if he would have reached out to kobe kobe would have been like come if you want i don't care yeah Mm -hmm. he's just like pull your weight kobe would have just straight straight up and like pull your weight Mm-hmm. That's it. Pull your weight. Damn, they would have been awesome together. Dude, dude. they would have been fantastic. What you're seeing right now with AD and LeBron, it would have been that, that, but ten times better. The chemistry between Kobe and LeBron is just unreal. Like yeah. they were legit brothers, and one of the missed opportunities, dude. Yeah, in yeah. Sport, in a great sports mm-hmm. matchup, and for this to come on the heels of LeBron passing him the night before, uh, the night before, you know, Kobe even congratulated him. On Twitter, you know, for passing, and he, I think he even called him after the game mm-hmm. and spoke with him. Well, like, the, yeah, because the media spoke to LeBron after the game, and then they just wanted to know how LeBron felt, and he ended up like talking about Kobe for five minutes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he cause LeBron loves him. Like mm-hmm. he, LeBron idolized Kobe, so it's like for for you to idolize someone that's so close to you in age. And oh man, I can only imagine. It's just crazy because we have three main titans when it when you think of the NBA greats. What do you got? You got MJ, Mm -hmm. you got Kobe, and you got LeBron now. You know, and MJ, he's always been a silent type. You know, he hasn't really been one unless you're talking about like Haynes commercials Mm -hmm. with a a Hitler stash. Um, You got that. (laughs) You got that going for that. And then you have Kobe, who's like an intellect, who has his own production company. Dude won a freaking Oscar for it. Yep. Um, Academy Award. it's it's an Oscar. Oh wow! Same yeah, thing. Same yeah. Thing, the more you know, food. <laughs> Jeez, dude. <laughs> pot it up. I'm I'm not in the know apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and now you have LeBron who has like a show on HBO. You know they seem to get louder the, when the greats come by. But well, I think they're more LeBron's more like media, production but. entertainment type. Yeah, he's, yeah. Le- LeBron's expanding on mm-hmm. Kobe, going seeking that. Yeah. And going further, which I think, again, like that just shows LeBron a following in Kobe's footsteps yet again. He's using his and, platform yeah. for what he perceives to be good for, you know, humanity and yeah. that kind of thing. So, I, I mean, both legend. Oh, we we just lost a, a good one, this one. And I remember I watched his last game. Me and you watched it. That mm-hmm. was that was fantastic, dude. For him to score 60 dude, fucking I was points. At, I was at DJ No Chill's uh, pad. With his roommates, and we were watching the, that sixty point game. Oh. That was fucking great, dude. Oh man, yeah. the, the, the most... very last game, he made it awesome. <sighs> Kobe's last game, he denied the Jazz a, a playoff spot, dude. Yep, he said, "No, no, 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 not That's on my dude. watch." He put up such a great. This performance. is my day. That they were. Kobe. They didn't even have like 
they had no chance of making the playoffs. They just wanted, didn't want to give it to the Utah Jazz. Yeah. Yeah, that's really what it was. It was it was legit just, hey, it's Kobe's last game. Let's just fucking ball out, dude. Fuck mm-hmm. the Jazz. And if you real, I mean, look, they never, everyone else didn't really score after a while. Once they saw Kobe was hot, they're just like, fuck it. Just keep feeding him. Yeah, give just it to keep Kobe. Feeding him. Give it to Kobe. It's his day. Like they even said it. They're like in the yeah. in the third and fourth quarter, I think Byron Scott was his coach, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Byron Scott's just like, just feed him, man. Give it to the old guy. He mm-hmm. wants it. So and then Kobe just took over. And God. Ah. Uh, yeah, there's so many great memories, and we're going to continue to, you know, keep remembering those and keep remembering him in such a good way. Uh, I mean, we still got Kobe Day, 824. Yeah, that's true. And it's yeah. going to be celebrated even more now. Oh, this year's going to be it's, wild. It's be I mean, and I was telling you guys earlier, you know, he's been immortalized. Whenever you throw a, a wadded up piece of paper into a wastebasket, you always scream Kobe. Yes. Do you it. know, he's and the it, new Marco Polo. And everyone, everyone, needs, <laughs> everyone has to keep doing that. Food. Yeah. It's so Kobe. always Kobe. So the legend can never die. And yeah. listen, listen, if there's anyone out there that uses names like Black Mamba, don't change them. Just keep him, man. Remember the guy. Even yeah. though it's going to be an outdated, people are going to be like, why are you playing? Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> Best Lakers team with Kobe. Who do you say? Him and Shaq were unstoppable, man. When it was Shaq, Ori, Rick Fox. Kobe, Rick Fox, yeah. Devin George, Derek, Derek Fisher. Fisher, dude. Um, he had three Horace pointers. Grant. Oh, man. Fisher and his three pointers was such a great compliment yep. to Shaq and Kobe. Yep. Hell yeah! Oh my God, he was like he was like an archer from back there, dude. Yeah, man. I mean, the, the guy was the archer, and then Kobe and Shaq were just like the infantry, just that, getting in there. That three P team is by far the greatest team of all time. Dream if, in team. fact, it is the greatest team of all time, in my opinion, because I mean, of what they were able to do. Granted, you can't keep a team that good together for so long like look at the warriors mm-hmm. you know everything happens but um you know what kobe still proves like hey he could still do it like uh, you cannot discount what kobe did back to back against the magic and against the celtics mm-hmm. finally getting the celtics thing off his back that celtics thing dude oh, that, that, that series game. was amazing remember he, back with what, what was that guy uh the Birdman? yeah Chris that guy Anderson. pissed me off yeah that guy pissed me off and they shut him up fast when he played against them yep oh yeah he, hated that guy <laughs> what bothered me most about him was the, the wings yeah oh, he had tattooed arm. on his arm ah! <laughs> bird man oh, no. and uh and you know i always equate uh sasha as a kimmy gibbler la machina <laughs> <laughs> Every time, man, we'd see him come up, my dad would just be in the back going, La Machina. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was a great player, man. He was, dude. He was. He, he, ah. That entire team was great, that dude. That team was dope. That's, even oh. Shannon Brown was pretty good on that team when they needed him. But God. And you had Luke. <sighs> Yeah, you had Luke in there too. Yeah, just Luke kind of mix. from the bench, <laughs> saying, "Hey guys, I'm <laughs> hey still guys, here. I'll the be salt. a manager soon. My dad's Bill. I'll be uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gasol's good too. Oh no, Gasol was great. Gasol, was that was after the fact, but he's still they they got champs with Gasol. No, yeah, they did. Uh huh. Yeah, man, it was <sighs> that first three P team though was hundred percent, man. I mean, oh, he, he, Kobe, Kobe was just an I a global great and a global icon and if you anyone out there you know i know this you're listening to this after the fact but if you guys you know are still kind of grieving about it i mean don't feel bad because we all are it's a this is a heavy one you know like i cried a few times today especially watching all this memorial stuff on tv god this kind of sucks you in and just you know what but don't be afraid to talk to people about it man talk about the memories of kobe and remember the good times and you know? That's what he wanted, food. Yeah, and yep. then you know what? I'm re- his uh, his his animation company. It's gonna. This is gonna be how like he's you know lived. It's gonna be immortal. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have a legacy. So, he, he has a long standing legacy, and it's crazy that he. This is what like he envisioned, like him mm-hmm. eventually making it, and like you know that little animated film he made. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, Dear saying basketball. goodbye to basketball. It's yeah. like damn. Now it's like him saying goodbye. So, yeah. I mean, Pretty. you know what? Kobe had a complete life. Like, even after retirement, he was loving life from what everyone was saying. Like, the guy was just really enjoying his kids, spending time with his younger daughter. Unfortunately, she's kind of getting slightly forgotten in the in the matter, too, because, you know, her dad. But, you know, 
G.G. Bryan, unfortunately, was was one on that on that plane, and that's a that's a that's potential that we will never see. That's just un. Uh, it's sad, man. Today's a, today's not an easy day for anyone. I always like the video of when Barnes tries to check Kobe by a oh, faking, with the, yeah, with the ball, like he's gonna throw the ball in his face, and Kobe doesn't even flinch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a G, man. Oh man. He had so many great dunks. I like the dunk he had against uh, what's his face, Gerald Wallace and Brooke Lopez, where he's mm-hmm. just going driving right down the lane, and they both go up to try and block him, and they almost high five, and he just like just barely makes it past him and dunks right on both of them and posterizes him. Like that's I think that was one of his last great years mm-hmm. when he was with uh, Powell, and damn that was. Uh, Who? What's your favorite Kobe moment? Actually. Uh, it's a series of moments by two players specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Kobe used to play against Bruce Bowen and Rajah Bell. Oh yeah, because Those were Bruce great. Bowen was like a def- not a necess- not like he stopped him, but Bruce Bowen was a good defender and good at annoying people, mm-hmm. and so was Rajah Bell. When Rajah Bell was on the Phoenix Suns, he used and to matching piss up with Kobe. Kobe, and then when Nash and Amari Stoudemire were on the Suns, they would match up Rajah Bell with Kobe and just be like, just bug the shit out of him. I would love those performances. I remember like him like slapping Kobe around in the first quarter and then they got in each other's face and then I think Kobe went off for like 50 that game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like every time. But then you'd have those games like against even Tony Daniels, like Tony Daniels against Kobe, especially in the finals for the Celtics. That was always a good matchup, but Bowen used to always lock up Kobe on the Spurs. Like like all of a sudden like whenever they would play at San Antonio, Bruce Bowen would just fucking be locked down defender all the time on him. But then in LA, yeah, things get a little different. But oh man, you just all those matchups he had, like the, then all the potential team ups he could have had. Like I wanted him to team up with Tracy McGrady. Like, oh my god. That, that would have been, been amazing. That could have been great. T Mac, if we had T Mac and Andrew Bynum and Kobe, whoo Oh man. Oh, oh dude. It would have been great. And you know what? They actually did an interview with each other. Um, a couple of months ago, and uh, they talked about that. You know, like was there ever going to be a, um, you know, a team up? And Kobe's just like, you know, a lot of people like to speculate and all that, but you know, I don't, you know, I don't think about what could have been, but probably not because I always wanted to kick his ass. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like that. Oh man, Kobe was just the guy that was always ready for the attack. You know, you know what though? My favorite non basketball Kobe moment, besides that Jalen Rose, uh, you know, commercial thing, mm-hmm. is the remember those uh, was it uh, the Mama mentality, the Kobe focus, um, Team Kobe like uh, seminars he had, like Kanye had one. Oh. He's like, hey Kobe, yeah, how can I? What can I do to be better? Just be great. Yeah, but how do I do that? It's not about how you do it; it's about doing it. I don't know what the fuck you just said, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's all, you're welcome. Like, oh, those, 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 yeah, commercials, were, those commercials were great. Like, oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, the game with the Raptors, that's, uh, that goes down in the books. Uh, free throws after uh, tearing his Achilles. Oh, that one was a... When he oh. had to do that. Uh, oh my god the, uh, that was a that was a tough one to watch too i mean you felt when this guy used to get himself hurt like when he broke his pinky yep and he still fucking kept shooting like lights out yeah it's like wow dude yeah uh, it's he he was great man he's 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 my he, he was my favorite player he like i was telling uh stefan the fool over here before that my brother had a Shaq jersey and i had a kobe jersey the number mm-hmm. eight and we would always be outside in the front playing basketball. And I'm like, all right, I'm lightning. You're thunder. Mm-hmm. And my brother's like, what the fuck? No, I'm not thunder. I'm lightning. I'm like, nah, man. Kobe Jersey. Sorry. Outrank <laughs> you. It's like, you know, you, that's a, a, he caused a lot of kids to love the love this game. And some some like yeah. actual NBA players, you know, idolized him. So he he's the next. He was the next generation's MJ. And, pretty much. Yeah. And pretty he, much. He played just like him. Like he modeled his game after MJ, mm-hmm. so I uh, he just made it exciting to watch. Yeah, you're like you watched the Laker game because you knew that there were the it was the Lakers, but most importantly, Kobe was a part of the team. 
and you knew that at some point Kobe would just turn it on and would just get the team back. Like if if it was possible, Kobe can always get a clutch win. He could figure out a way to win. Like you just need at least one person to and give him. And you felt hope. it when he didn't. Yeah, he was just like, oh man, you know that's you know you that's know beating him wa- up. And you knew he wanted it. Like mm-hmm. everyone knew and felt when Kobe wanted to fucking win. No one ever questioned him because Kobe was always pissed at himself after every mm-hmm. game when people tried interviewing him. Like you could tell he was fucking pissed off and he didn't want to do media interviews. Like yeah, ah, oh, Matt. Yeah, I mean. He had some he had some great fucking moments like winning the championship the dunk contest didn't he as a as a rookie Yeah yeah he won the dunk contest and that was it he didn't want to do it anymore after that He's like all right I got it I don't need I don't need to go back He was a living legend dude He 18 time all-star I'll never forget when the Lakers won that first championship and they were flipping cars over in downtown Yeah and I was right. watching on TV <laughs> I was like holy shit dude <laughs> and my dad was so pissed off cuz he worked for waste management <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "God damn it, we're gonna have to help with the cleanup." Because <laughs> I think they, I think they won like on a Sunday night, the first championship. Oh, so everyone, oh no, wow. yeah. Oh fuck, I gotta go back to work tomorrow. But I guess it was worth it, Foos, because they brought two more in. Yep, right after, <laughs> and then everyone chilled out. It was like, "All right, all right, I can't have that again. Again, like, don't do that again." Oh man, what a. <sighs> Kobe. It's like you guys said, man. We got to remember the good times because he gave us a lot of good times. He gave us something to marvel, you know. When I was a kid in middle school, and I would just look forward to going home, turning it on, you know, Channel Seven when they would, uh, whenever they would play a home game, and just watch Kobe like just bang it out with Shaq and the rest. It was just, it was just. It was good entertainment. Dude, the, the it was good basketball. You're like, God damn, these guys are so good. The days with Shaq and Kobe were the best. Dude. Artwork, dude. It was yeah. fucking artwork. Yeah. I remember my dad used to just listen to him on the radio, not even watch him on TV. He'd prefer to listen to it on oh, the yeah, radio. Oh yeah, Chick Hearn, man. Chick Hearn. Oh my god. Oh, the dude. Like the when That's those right. calls we had Chick those back great then. calls. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. That yeah. jello was jiggling, dude. Dude. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Oh, Mama Jamma. <laughs> uh, damn. Yeah. It, well, you will be missed, guys. He will be. He, he will, will be, be missed. We'll, the, the we'll NBA, remember him. Yeah, the NBA is going to do some pretty awesome tributes that to continue mm-hmm. on what they've done so far. The I, Grammys, I'm looking at the internet right now. The Grammys had a nice little thing that they did before them. And every, every team so far, I think uh, MSG, Madison Square Garden, they lit up their entire stadium in purple and gold for Kobe. Um, they even had like a, a moment of silence, 24 seconds, you know, on the shot clock, a moment of silence for him. Every team so far, or like Trey Young, he actually came out in the number eight jersey. He wears normally wears 11, came out with the number eight jersey for him. And uh, like each side to begin at the beginning took 24 seconds off of a shot clock violation in honor of him. So mm. they couldn't cancel the games, but you know what? Each team's just like, we got to recognize this dude's happening, man. Like this is happening. You know, it's a, it's a sad, sad fucking day, but you know what? Some people need this and they needed it. Cause I'm sure if they didn't play, like, I, I don't know how LeBron's feeling right now. I mean, look at it like this dude, how, um, what would Kobe have wanted? He would want everyone to keep playing. Yeah. Yeah. He would wanted everyone just to st- you know, celebrate his life, enjoy all his moments, and then just keep going about your business. Do what you got to do. And uh, I think that's what we all should kind of do. It sounds kind of callous, but, you know, just keep remembering the good times, praying for his family, if for those that pray uh, and do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you send our wish- well wishes for those that don't pray. Yeah, man. And uh, for those uh, for those of us that just want to celebrate his life and whatever he brought to the table, whenever his mouth opened, whenever he jumped on a court, you know, the uh, the ethic that he displayed, the work ethic that just showed, you know, how great of a player he was because of the work that he put in the hours of just practice and practice. And uh, he was a great influence of somebody who, you know, strives to achieve any kind of goal. You know, he, he he had he had his goal in the crosshairs, and he wasn't going to stop until he got it. And goddamn, dude! And he was smart. He was one of the smart ones that bypassed college to just achieve what he knew he deserved mm-hmm. because of the hours that he put in. 
You know, nuts to that. If, 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 if I, I would have, you know, the NCAA wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a challenge for him. No, not at all. And at age eighteen, like he was, and I mean, he immediately started creating an impact. Like, I mean, his first year, yeah, he was up and down, but his second year, he started flourishing. You know, and for someone to flourish so young, so fast, mm-hmm. uh, he was he was just a one of a kind talent. That just came into the NBA and to all and into all of our lives, you know, at a great time, and he he really influenced an entire generation. Mm-hmm. Um, there are still kids today that like twelve year olds and stuff that still liked Kobe and remember Kobe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, man. I mean, Steph, I know you've been a little quiet. Uh, what's your favorite moment from Kobe? I love all the basketball games, and Kobe was one of those rare gems where he can do anything. But I think the the first thing I thought of when I thought of Kobe was when he appeared in that Cypress Hill song. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm singing it in my head, dude. I can't, I, every time I hear it on the radio, like, I can't change the channel. Like, because I, I know it's Kobe. You're like, all right, I so got to just, I, I gotta I, just I, let this go. Nobody, nobody speak during Kobe's <laughs> verse, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, damn. And he was just like a, he's a fun guy outside the court. Yeah. He wasn't all business. Oh, yeah. He, he, had, was, he just, had personality. Hell yeah. From whatever, yeah. from what I Part hear. Part of his intellect. Yeah. From what I hear, he asked people like questions, like really in-depth and intellectual questions. It's almost like you're having a conversation with like a philosopher. Like from what everyone said, he always picked your brain. He always wanted to really find out how your, how people's brains work. So he, you know, he, he he just had that automatic charisma built into him yeah. that he was able to do that. Oh, well, damn, foo. Well, speaking of, uh, I have this, uh, I, found, I just found this clip, a two and a half minute clip on YouTube about his, uh, it's, a, it's his best motivational speech. So I think it's it's very appropriate that we go ahead and you just play You son this. of a bitch. You want to, you want to, you, <laughs> <know, laughs> you want to just end you, on this? Who the, just yeah, we can end on this and then uh, a minute of silence and then that'll be that. Yep. All right, guys. The tears are going to flow, everybody. Foobarshow.com. Check us out and uh, let's. A uh, couple of grown men crying. All let's right, sign right, off with Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a young basketball player who had dreams of becoming one of the greatest basketball players of all time. My name is Kobe Bryant. I'm 17 years old. I have the hunger, the motivation, and the desire to be the best possible basketball player that I could be. He worked day and night. Every day, for years and years and years and years and years. As time went on, 20 years had passed. And he felt that he had accomplished all that he set out to accomplish. But what he come to realize is that the goal that he set out initially of becoming the greatest of all time was a very fickle one. And what he realized that the most important thing in life is how your career moves and touches those around you and how it carries forward to the next generation. Did he realize that's what makes true greatness? Well, the story would be about transformation of a kid looking inwardly to then growing up and understanding the importance and the power he's looking out with. It's a great feeling to know that you set a goal for yourself and you were able to reach that goal and to not get that. If I had the power to turn back time, I would never use it. I don't think about it. Because then every moment that you go through means absolutely nothing, but you can always go back and do it again. So it loses its flavor, it it's loses its, its beauty. When things are final, you know, moments won't ever come again. To be able to have the power to go back and re-experience those things is, it's silly to me. When you take that jersey off for the final time, how do you think you're going to feel? Very at peace with it and um, I'm very thankful you know, for, the, for the 20 years that I've had. And um, 
ready to go.